So I'm Justin Schaefer. I'm currently the product manager for places and events at Facebook. Um, formerly worked on groups for a bit and joined them uh, late last summer. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about extending the graph, just to try and give you guys some context about how we're thinking about location data as it relates to everything else on Facebook. And for sort of brief background and history, you know, Facebook really started with a social graph. And the social graph, we define it as the relationships between people that help you connect and share with the people that you care about the most. And then last year at F8, we announced the open graph. And the open graph added the ability for you to connect yourself and your friends to connect themselves to objects or URIs on the internet. This is the open graph, and it lets you like different pages and, and different things. I like sailing and, and skiing and, uh, and a number of people. Um, and so the other thing that, that, that we're doing now is we're starting to move into sort of two different spaces. One really is geo explicitly, and the other is temporal. And with geo, what we've done is we've originally, going back to kind of the origins of Facebook, you've been able to say where you're from and, and what city you're in currently. Um, last year, we launched our Places product, which I'll talk a little bit more about here. Um, and what this lets you do is create relationships between yourself, or edges as we call them in the graph, um, between yourself and places that represent location in the world. Um, and where this gets really interesting is actually when we bring in temporal data as well. This perhaps is even more interesting than location, um, is knowing when you were at a particular place and ultimately what you were doing. Um, and so we represent this today with the events product, but uh, you know, it's an area that's uh, ripe for a lot of opportunity. Um, all of this is inherently and fundamentally social. And we think about it again in these three axes. The open graph, really all about connections based around interests. You know, a number of my friends have been to uh, Brasserie Leap, and 35 of them like it. Um, that's great context for me when I'm trying to make a decision about whether or not I might want to go to that particular place or, or to a particular event. From a geospatial perspective, these connections are all about location. So this is like, here's a photo, for example, that a friend of mine took of the Eiffel Tower. Um, and it's in Paris. Um, and it was taken you know, last year. And temporal really is all about activities, what people are doing. And so this is like, there are four people here right now and 50 people nearby. Um, we're going to expand with different facets of the product, probably in all three of these directions. And you know, we're really excited about what we've got uh, in store for the next year. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit about also about how location is represented and exists on Facebook today, just for context. Uh, so the place we all start is the profile. And again, like I mentioned before, we highlight where you live, where you're, where you're, you're from, and also, you know, if you're using the Places product, your recent check-ins. Um, and so here, I checked in um, last night, was hacking on some stuff at, at Facebook HQ. And so these are three fundamentally different contexts, but they all represent edges between me and, and different locations. I'm from New York, now I live in Palo Alto. Um, Another interesting context for this is our Pages product. Um, this is built for businesses and for places that people congregate around. And there are a couple things here that are interesting to call out that we have in the product today. Um, number one, as we mentioned before, you've got feedback from your friends. You can see who's been to this particular place. You can see how many people like it. This is, again, great signal for understanding, is this something that's of interest or not? We've also started recently, I don't know that we announced this, but we've started recently showing places nearby that are interesting as well. So again, as we start to explore the geo-based relationships between objects in the, in the Facebook graph, um, we can start to expose this kind of data and say, you know, given a particular local restaurant, here's other stuff that's likely of interest to you based on the history of uh, activity that you, you have on Facebook and the activity of your friends. Um, we also show recent stories from your friends on this page. And so you can think of this instead of newsfeed, which is kind of the collection of all of the most interesting stuff going on on Facebook. If you wanted to look at a particular location or place, you could go there and see all the activity happening there. Um, so when we launched last year the Places product, we were focused on, in the present tense, sharing what you're doing. And it's a pretty simple flow. Um, we use the same check-in metaphor that you've seen in other products. Um, and you know, we kept this reasonably simple. So you can check in. You can pick a nearby place. Recently, we added events as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And you can just check in. And what this does is it creates a story that's not only the text of you saying what you're doing, um, if you added that, but also a relationship between you and that place, which then gets reflected on your profile and on the place page and it's great context for your friends. We've seen this used principally um, as a medium for storytelling, and that's what we're fundamentally the most excited about. Uh, this is what happens on Facebook, whether you're posting photos or you're updating your status. People are talking about what they're doing, with whom, 
where and you know using a, a variety of other relationships. Now, one of the most interesting things that, that we saw with the places launch is it really fundamentally actually isn't about where you are. It's much more about who you're with. There's this inherent exchange of social capital that's really exciting. And for those of you who use the product, you've probably experienced this. Um, it's really nice to share who you're with and, and what you're doing. And where you actually are becomes second order, though it's it's really interesting context. The other thing people have used the product for really are memories. So if you're doing something interesting, you know, you're telling your friends and it's nice to be able to go back and reflect on, on where you've been. Um, and then finally, um, we, you know, we all are excited about this serendipitous use case when you check in and your friends come and find you. And we find it happens reasonably often, but not as much as we'd like. And so one area to explore in that regard is the, the temporal sort of axis as opposed to the geo axis. Right now, we have people sharing where they are right now, um, but there are all sorts of other op opportunities to share what you might be doing in the future via the events product or you know, what you've done potentially in the past. Um, so that leads me to events. Some of the work we've done this year is really all about making places and events more synonymous. We think they're like fundamentally the same thing, except events actually make it even easier. They include what, when, and, and who's doing a particular activity. Um, so we're spending our time actually pursuing sort of two different use cases here that are somewhat orthogonal. Um, one is the case of I'd like to organize an event. It's my birthday, and I want to make sure that you know, my friends know about and hopefully come to my birthday party, um, which is actually fundamentally different than the sort of existing use case for the check-in product, which is all about sharing what you're doing. Um, and so we're pursuing both of these directions. We're pretty excited about it, um, but uh, still early, and you know, stay tuned for, for much more from us on, on this front. Um, I also wanted to call out data. So we started basically at zero last year when we launched the Places product. We didn't have a whole lot of particularly accurate or, or meaningful location data beyond like city level data and Facebook. Um, and what we did initially was we went out and did a bunch of partnerships. And this is worth noting, we were very, very diligent about making sure we got entirely unencumbered data. So as a platform partner, any of you who are building on top of the Facebook platform can go and actually basically do whatever you want with data that you're, you're getting out of the Facebook platform. Um, instead of having to agree to attribution or a variety of other complex licenses that we've seen kind of around the ecosystem, um, some, some more friendly than others. And so you know, we really wanted to make sure that we were building this product in a, in a manner and in, in means in which it could become a platform and, and we could make all of this information um, as it's relevant and you know, to the extent your users want to share it with you, um, available. And so in, in more recent times, we've spent more time developing both our own code internally and also a uh, you know, mechanism for crowdsourcing, um, which we've been particularly pleased with. We opened Places Up internationally, I think about two months ago, um, and we're uh, on our way, I think, to having uh, one of, if, if not the largest, database of places, especially places that are socially interesting and relevant. So we don't really have a utilitarian case for the product. You're probably not using Facebook to find your doctor's office, though you may at some point if that's relevant for you to share. Um, but for, for places where people gather and where interesting things happen, we have a, a really, really good set of data. And you know, what we're doing is using the crowd and our own algorithms to dedupe, to merge places, to categorize, we've added categories recently. You can see that called out here, uh, Palo Alto Souls, a Mexican restaurant, and to build region into this well, at both the city level and the neighborhood level. Um, so Palo Alto Soul is, in fact, in Palo Alto. And then we're starting to do some work, again, as I mentioned, sort of combining places and events to the, to the extent that we can do that. So just to finish quickly, um, for those of you who are curious, our team's going to be around for uh, most of the day if you want more engineering specifics. We have a talk this afternoon, and, and I'll be milling around. Please come and grab me. But there really are three areas in which you can work with Facebook today that, that, that we'd be really excited to talk to you about. Number one, we'd love to get everybody using our Open Graph API. This is for places and events. We're making a bunch of improvements, adding things like categorization, neighborhood data, and, and a bunch of other stuff coming in the pipe in short, fairly short order. Um, and we're also interested in data. So if you'd like to see you know, a data set that you might have available within Facebook for Facebook users, you know, please come and see us. I think we can you know, find a way to make it, make it available relatively easily and in, in uh, a good way. And then finally, last fall we launched check-in deals. This is an opportunity for a page owner or admin to actually create a deal which promotes a product or, or offer um, when people check into their place. Um, really excited about these. And you know, there's a whole slew of opportunities for people who are running local businesses or interested in helping them around our Pages product. That's all I have today. Thanks.